we outrank now in, in the US, the likes of Amazon and Etsy for the top 100 key terms that are around, you know, neon signs. This is Biz Ninja Entrepreneur Radio with your host, Tyler Jorgensen. Welcome out to Biz Ninja Entrepreneur Radio. I have a guest today that I think you're really going to love coming to us from uh, all the way around the world over in Australia. Um, I guess for for him, we're on the other side of the world or wherever you're listening. We've got listeners everywhere. So maybe he's in your backyard. But uh, we have Jake Monday, who is the founder and creator of Custom Neon and who has quite the entrepreneurial journey that I'm excited to unpack here for you today. Welcome out to the show, Jake. Thanks for having me. So, yeah, I guess I realize, you know, you're you're down under, but we're just all the way on the other side, too. So it's not just us. So we're going to go through a little bit about your journey, about how you quit school and about how uh, you've done a few different things, but let's start with now. Uh, tell me about Custom Neon. What is what is Custom Neon? Uh, Custom Neon is an LED neon uh, business. Uh, we supply neon signs all around the world. Uh, anything from you know events, weddings, kids' rooms, business, restaurants, you know, you name it. There is uh, a neon that we can put in that space. Awesome. And so it's uh, mostly an e-commerce store. You've been selling online, what, since 2018? Um, Correct. Yeah, we started in 2018 and it's purely e-commerce. Um, we yeah. do have teams around uh, the UK, Australia and the US that are working one-on-one with our customers that are sending like logos. Um, but yeah, purely online. Awesome. And so how'd you get this idea? Uh, interesting story. I, bought, I wanted a neon sign for my son, Jagger. He was three months old and uh, I knew it would be something I'd probably put up and then put in the cupboard, you know, three or four months later. But I just liked the idea of a neon sign in his room and did some research and, and found the process quite difficult in terms of finding uh, a neon sign. Some were glass, uh, some customer, some companies didn't even get back to me. Uh, anyway, long story short, I purchased a neon sign. Um, it was 350 Australian dollars. And um, two or three weeks later, it came in my front door. And uh, it was, I was great. I was really happy with the quality, but I also noticed that underneath the label they sent me, um, it was pretty much dropshipped. Right. So, uh, you know, in previous business that, that we'll touch on, um, I had that experience with, you know, uh, online business before as well. And so anyway, we purchased some ne- more neon signs for our wedding. Uh, Jess and I got married and we purchased more neon signs for our wedding and and thought we actually went over the top. I convinced her to buy about eight neons for our wedding. And um, then we used the content from the wedding to set up an Instagram account. Uh, we approached local businesses here in Geelong, offered them, you know, cost price to get a neon sign and used the content from that. Uh, and, you know, it was meant to be a side hustle for my wife. And yeah, I guess we were getting a lot of uh, yeah, inquiries and, and we'll be very responsive just on Instagram. And then, Away we went. We've been. We built a tool, uh, an online uh, design tool, so you could actually design your own name on online. Uh, it was one of the first of its kind, because we were going back and forth sending fonts on, on like Word doc or Photoshop to our customers. Like, do you like this font? They're like, no. We're like, oh, do you like this font? And going back and forth. So we bought it. We, we built a custom tool that you can type in exactly what you want, pick your font, pick your color, and check out. And that's where this business really just took off. Yeah, no, it's amazing, especially because it's such a visual thing. People want to be able to see it. So to be able to like live preview, build it out is pretty amazing. Now, this was a, you you ordered a sign for yourself. You ordered some for the wedding. You decided to do it as a side hustle. But talk to us about where you're actually at. Where where are you looking to hit in revenue this year? Uh, we're forecasted 16.5 mil. Um, so in four short years, you know, we've got a team of about 30 around the globe. So, like, you know, every day I pinch myself to to where it is today. Um, yeah. You know, obviously it didn't come, you know, easy. It's a lot of hard work and, and a lot of learnings along the way. But yeah, you know, to to have a goal to, like, you know, I don't know, sell, I don't know, 10 neon signs a month to now, uh, you know, selling 1,200 plus, um, you know, yeah, we couldn't. Big jump. Yeah, no, it's pretty amazing. And so you, um, let's now we're going to dial it back. We're going to go back to the early yeah. days of, of Jake Monday's entrepreneurial career and journey. Um, so you're in school and you realize this just wasn't for you. What was the when was the first time you realized, man, maybe I'm an entrepreneur? Well, I didn't even know what that word meant back then. Sure, uh, but I was I, behind, I was behind the old cell phones on eBay and and um, kind of flipping them. So I was doing that, and then that was while I was at school. 
and also then went uh, after I quit school. My uncle had a, a rims business, uh, like a you know wheels business that he would buy um, these re- these wheels, refurbish them, and then sell them pretty much as new. And I was the one that was listing them on eBay and and sending them and getting you know twenty five percent cut and whatnot. So I was kind of always doing things on the side. And then also my my pop used to be a, a potato farmer. Um, my dad used to sell some caravans, and my uncle um, was, uh, you know, I met, uh, had 30, 40, 50 different pubs around Australia. So uh, I think it's in the in the blood. Yeah. And, so you definitely just, had a little bit of like at least an awareness that you could yeah. do something different, something not traditional nine to five. Um, and so the first one of the first big things you did is you picked up a Facebook page that uh, you had, you know, you grew accordingly to this from 440,000, which is already a lot to 4 million followers, but you monetized it. So tell us about how did you grow it and how did you monetize it? Yeah, so we, I purchased it for 5,000 US. Um, thought I'd be able to do something with it. So I actually tried to sell dog products on the on the page and realized a lot of the audience was in the US. It was just costing me lots to ship. Uh, looked at other pages and then realized that I could, yeah, monetize it. So basically, um, companies reached out to a few companies and, and provided me links to post on the page. And then would get a cut, you know, anyone that purchased those links or signed up to their email address. I was getting email databases, getting a dollar per email address. So the page, and then I was just posting, other than that, cute dog photos. And, you know, back in the day when Facebook was what it was, you know, things would go viral. And we had one, we just actually just recycled a photo that was a little girl saying, if I, I get a million likes, my, my dad will buy me a puppy. You know, and and within seventy two hours, there we go. Me, me and likes, and we're growing one hundred thousand followers a day, and and with that, the revenue grew from you know four k a month to forty k a month. Um, and then in no time at all, I was basically scheduling out every hour of my posts and getting paid for for that. Um, one of the biggest customers uh, was the one that I actually sold the business to, which was in in the US, and went over there, played a game of golf, was part of the deal, uh, sold it, and then that obviously set me up. So even if you lost the golf game, you still uh, still won, right. still won that one. That's pretty still amazing. Uh, do you think is that something you encourage people to do now? Is is get into kind of affiliate marketing and sponsorship or that type of uh, kind of growing pages and communities, or is that something you think was a trend? I think it's hard in our Facebook that very much you know pay to reach, um, so that that makes it very hard. Uh, obviously, you know, we're running a business, we're paying on, on socials and whatnot to make sales. It's definitely obviously achievable, but it's the, the days where things would go viral. I mean, TikTok's where it's at now where that can happen. Uh, right. But but yeah, the days are gone to just to set up a Facebook page. But um, there's, there's lots of ways, obviously, to, to make money. It's just about trialing and, and testing. You know, yeah. when we first started custom, we, we, we um, did all the free listings like Gumtree and Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. Like we just listed everywhere uh, because that's what you do when you start, you know, you, you bootstrap it. So, what percentage of your guys' current now on Custom Neon, what percentage of your revenue is from custom, even though I mean it's in the name, but you also have some stock items? Uh, are people just coming yeah. in and also buying stock stuff? Yeah, very. We, we, our focus is custom. That is exactly what we focus on. So, less than 5% would be shop items. Um, there is you know, room for us to improve in that area, no doubt. But, you know, our focus is the um, custom side of things. And 65% yeah. of our overall revenue goes through our tool. So as you started growing from a goal of doing 10 signs a month to doing 1,200 plus orders a month, uh, what were some of the biggest challenges that you faced and how did you overcome them? For me, early on, being an entrepreneur and, and having a other uh, business that is growing quickly you know we start we're starting in australia and also we start making sales in the us and us starts becoming a big market um i i was just like i hide people you know i hide I hide some teams whoever whoever had some design experience and some customer service experience come on board let's go that person had a, a friend or a cousin all right jump on let's go um so one of the mistakes early on is probably in the long run you know they, they helped us scale and help us grow but in the long run that you know that they weren't the right people for for us culture wise and, and things didn't work out there. So that's where Jess stepped in from a HR background, my wife, and and came more into the business and really brought that process and structure. Something that I need. There's a there's a book um, that I relate to called Rocket Fuel. Um, and you know, being a visionary and integrator, you got it on your shelf. Yeah, I think uh, I just put a book in front of it, but it's yeah, it's right there. 
There you go. Yeah. So being an integrator and visionary, and I think that's one of the successes to our story is, you know, I'm very much a visionary. If this was just my business, it would have gone real hard, real fast, you know, would have made some money, but it wouldn't have the sustainability long term. Um, and, and Jess has been able to bring that as well as our business partners uh, into that mix as well. But particularly, you know, Jess and I, um, obviously being a wife and working in the business with your wife, um, you know, luckily enough, it, it works really well. Yeah. Yeah. That, I'm sure that has some unique challenges. Now we, we're kind of jumping back and forth in your story and that's a little bit on purpose. So you, you did this, uh, you know, Facebook page and, and that did really well. You ended up selling that off. Um, and you guys did a, a teeth whitening business, which has a lot of challenges on advertising and even sometimes merchant processing, right? Um, how did you guys get started into the, into pearly whites? Yeah, so that was just, I guess, one of my that was just that was me. I, I um a friend at the time had a, and a business that that she was having to go go out. She sold I think four hundred units on on her own, um, and we'll, I was just chatting. And obviously, with my online experience, I said, uh, you know, like if you're interested in in we are working together, I'd be happy to run some ads and see how we go. Uh, and that, that turned into, you know, buying into the business, put 20K down. Um, that would also secure the first thousand orders. And, and part of the deal was once I, once I sold them, I'd, you know, pay myself back. Um, and then, yeah, that, that then scaled again. That scaled from, uh, I don't know, the first month was 30K, then like 110 uh, you know, 180, 220, all the way up to about 480. Uh, and then at that during that that cycle of well, six to eight months, uh, I wanted to keep expanding into the United States. That was purely just in Australia. Yeah, it's impressive. I wanted to I wanted to expand that in, into the US, and we had different opinions on that. Uh, I wanted to keep reinvesting the money. Um, and and she, you know, she she had other um, ideas. So that's where the relationships are breaking apart. Yeah. And so talk to us just a little bit about you know, partnerships in general, right? You've you've got one business that you've had a partnership with your wife. Sounds like so far it's going okay. Uh, and there, you recognize the difference and the positives and the negatives of like visionary and integrator. Uh, mm -hmm. But then in the past, you've had partnerships that didn't work out. What's your advice to um, entrepreneurs considering having a partner? Go in, go in with open-minded. Um, you know, it, you know, it's very easy to put the rose-colored glasses on and think everything's going to be okay. Look, at the end of the day, I think it's important to at the start to to put all the um, terms down and be open and honest about you know all different expectations and, and go into things that you know if it is successful, what does that look like? If it isn't successful, what does that look like? And kind of have the conversations up front uh, and and understand you know even like I'm a parent now so like lucky enough Jess and I agree on a lot of things but it, it's until you have a baby that you go oh I don't agree with the way that you're parenting and whatnot so it's a similar you know with business you know you, it's yeah so I just encourage you to have a conversation up front and, and look at all possibilities and and go and go from there yeah I think that's super important with with partnerships is being able to map out even the bad things, right? Hey, if this happens, how are we going to handle it? If uh, mm -hmm. if we have to face, like, even like you said, a victim of your own success, like you were growing to a point where one partner wanted to pull money out and one partner wants to plow back and grow, like that's mm -hmm. a big difference because some people, mm -hmm. for some people getting to $100,000 in their business is more than they've ever dreamed of. Mm -hmm. But if you understand like, well, we could be doing a million or 10 million, right? Like, it yeah. might be a different and not everyone's you know, ready to be on the same rate or same pace or same race. Right. So, so you guys, do you guys still do that? Or is that a, that's a business you guys are still involved with? Yeah. So what happened there was I went on a, on a trip to an e-commerce trip to Thailand and I'll go through this quickly. I met some great people there, but one of the guys I met there was Matt, uh, Matt Ed, who's our business partner today. So he actually purchased out that business partner. We weren't seeing eye to eye. Uh, he purchased her out. Uh, and then we did pearly whites together, and then on the side, Jess and I did that custom, the custom neon side of things, and we were having success by ourselves. And I was like, "Hey, Matt, you should check this out, dude. Like, they they focus on SEO, uh, and just that's they've done that before Google's around, so they're you know super experienced at that. Once again, husband wife team, and, and you know he looked into it. And goes, actually, yeah, you got you got some legs here, like especially in the US, and that's where. He did an earning. Him and his wife did an earning to custom now. So they put some money down and then earned the rest in. Mm -hmm. And that was that looked something like, you know, when they got X amount of organic sales in the US, then it was 50-50. And nice. um, you know, it's worked really well since then. That's awesome. And I think 
you know, that way of of getting of exiting a partner, I, I've had a few colleagues do transactions similar where it's like, hey, one partner wants cash and the other wants to grow. It's like, well, let's have somebody a, a more a partner with better alignment come in and mm-hmm. then buy that person out and everyone kind of gets what their goal is, right? Somebody people who, the person who wants to grow it has the ability to have now a partner who wants that same vision. Um, so you guys do, I mean, both pearly whites and custom neon have really good visuals and aesthetic, right? Like they pop on social media. I'm sure there's a little bit of coincidence to that, but what have you guys learned after running this much, creating this much content and running ads? What have you learned um, about engaging content on socials that our listeners could learn from? I think it's um, keeping it relevant and trying to, you know, you've got such a short period of time to grab someone's attention these days. So, um, look, the the, the basic um, in, uh, advice I would give um, to entrepreneurs out there is, is look at some businesses that you, uh, you know, look up to, look at businesses that you follow and, and look at what they're doing and, and see what they might be doing well uh, and basically replicate content off that with your own stuff. Um, right. There's no point of trying to reinvent the wheel. You know, there's businesses out there that are doing it and doing it well. So uh, I'll just be yeah, looking at that. Yeah, I'm a big fan of modeling what's working in in all aspects. Hey, these are the type of ads that are converting. And this ad, this client or this business is spending, you know, 50 grand a day on ads. Well, mm-hmm. I should probably start with that. They've got a lot more data than I have with just my opinion. Um, so I, I love the idea of starting with what's working, making it your own, making it custom, but using you know, success leaves clues. So there's Absolutely. a lot of clues out there. What and those um, that don't, what's that? Don't know. I just quickly, uh, yeah, Facebook, Facebook uh, library, you can Google Facebook ad library and, and see oh, what yeah. other, you type in any business and see what they're, what ads they're running. You can, you can quickly, you know, get a taste of what's out there and, and how you can do things. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, when we look, we'll always say, Hey, well, go, go look at the oldest ads that are still running. Cause those ones are probably converting if their sure. ad buyer is decent. Um, yeah, yeah. if you were to start custom neon completely over today, you had to like start it over today and rebuild it. What would you do differently? Ah, good question. Um, you know, the hard thing is to answer that because we've, we've had such a, gr- uh, you know, a great trajectory that, yeah. you know, I wouldn't want to change too much. Um, good. I think, I think early on, obviously hiring differently for us, maybe um, updating the processes and procedures early on, a bit more automation early on. We spent a yeah. lot of time in that um, 2020 and 2021 uh, early on. So, geez, I mean, obviously, there's so many, so much stuff you take back and start, but um, that yeah, would be absolutely. the main thing that I would go back and, and, and change, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. And, you know, what's interesting is uh, you, you're the visionary, you know, you got your, your wife who's an integrator, what would if you have that balance? What do you think is the mm-hmm. most important hire to kind of co- complement those two? And like, what's the most important third piece? Jeez, um, <laughs> you told me not to ask you hard questions. I mean, I'm yeah, sorry. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. That's, that's I think I think obviously a product that sells. Yeah, um, you know, it's something that actually is something you can both you know ride the wave of. If 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 you if you haven't got a, something or a product or service that that is. Um, you know, then you can't really put that, you know, I guess rocket fuel into practice. Yeah, that makes sense. And so you guys, uh, you still enjoying custom neon, you still enjoy working with it and seeing the product and hasn't gotten old. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we love what we do. We love our team. We love the, the, the daily grind. You know, we went to the States just recently. I was able to take my family there. Uh, we met a USA team for the first time, you know, because of the pandemic. Our operation manager has been there three times for three or four times, but yeah, it was good. So, and then you want to visit the UK, but yeah, we love we love what we do. We think that we've still got a lot of growth left in in what we're doing. You know, we're really just touching the sides, especially with the US and Canada. Um, so, yeah, we, we're we're very optimistic and and enjoy what we do every day. That's really cool. That's, uh, you know, that doesn't always happen. Some people will get into a business, especially if it's an early trend and then the trend may yeah. die off it, but they're like, I don't enjoy this anymore. Uh, but I think what's neat is, you know, you guys do so many different types of designs and work with so many, you guys have, give me, I'm going to give you a quick chance to name drop. You guys have worked at some really big names. Who have you guys done signs for? Uh, we did Paris Hilton's wedding, um, which was, which that was, um, that was great. You know, that was uh, actually a voice DM, you know, they were like, we, had a, we we did a sign ages for Paris and we tagged her in, but yeah, she approached us like, "Hey, custom neon, you know, wanted a neon sign for, her, for their wedding." Um, Elon Musk, we 
we didn't realize he purchased a stein until he posted it on twitter and then we're like you know oh yeah that's one of ours that's uh, cool. I like that he. I like that he just bought it, right? Instead yeah. of like d- DMing you, can you send me it? It's amazing how many people just want free stuff, right? Even though they're they can clearly pay for it. Uh, right, yeah, yeah. Who else? Uh, the Jenners, I think. Yeah, the um, eight killer eight one eight. I don't know which one, which Jenner, but um, wow, well, geez, yeah. And then, and just, you, I mean, you guys do big companies, and you do baseball, like yeah, yeah, lots of big stuff. So you do. I mean, you're not just doing like signs for weddings and bedrooms right you're also doing big logo and cool things correct i think um, that a lot of like you know facebook tiktok and all the big brands obviously worked with with a lot of them um i think that for us because of our the strength in our seo and rankings on our on google you know we outrank now in the us the likes of amazon and etsy for the top 100 key terms that are around you know neon signs so and then obviously underneath that we've got our competitors so i think a lot of these you know, celebrities and and businesses are, you know, searching for neon signs and, and obviously saying that we're a legit brand, you know, and we're the first ones that they um inquire with. So Yeah, no, you definitely had early an early mover advantage on it, right? Like I had a restaurant years ago that actually had old school neon in it, right? And now this new this new technology, right? It doesn't run hot, it doesn't the, the glass doesn't break, you don't have to worry about any of that. So um and it has that kind of vintage vibe which is definitely trending for and i think will for a long time uh yeah yeah what uh what was like what's one of the most like memorable signs you guys have done for me uh, one, one i worked on early on was the facebook thumbs uh head office uh in in los angeles uh yeah so it's like a 10 is it 10 meters it's like maybe four meters high and six meters wide, that's the first thumb. Then the next one's a bit smaller and the next one's a smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's so that um, I think customers that go there will, um, can stand in front of it. They can all change colors as well. So it's RGB. Um, so that was um, that was fun. Yeah. And, and seeing that in insulation. Um, yeah. That's really, it's really neat to see. I mean, it's cool to see it on a small scale too. It really is. I think if you're a creator, I think anytime you get to see your, your work in the wild is really neat, mm-hmm. but there's something special about big projects that were like harder to take on, harder to tackle. Um, when see them come to life, it's really cool and, and I think super rewarding. What's your uh, what's your next big goal? What I've learned, um, Ben, I guess an entrepreneur is actually just focused on the one thing. You know, we talked about Pearly Wyatt's. There was also three or four other businesses that I was doing at the one time back then as well, which we have, we haven't touched on, but that's part of the entrepreneurial journey, right? Right. Um, uh, yeah, so and that's what I've learned. It's just focus on the one thing and, and and do it well. So, look, our biggest goal, I think, over the next three or four years, is to is to try and double our revenue and and work hard at doing that. There's obviously opportunities there. We know what angles to, or what we can do to try and get there. You know, and I guess along the way, we're we're chipping away and, and kind of uh, achieving things. Like we're doing Love Island Australia at the moment. Um, doing the, all the neon signs in the villa and then doing a partnership with them and being able to sell the the neons, but also use their specific font on our tool so oh, that cool. you know people can create their own piece of love on and take it home. Uh, so that's launching at this end of this month. You know, so things like that. You know, yeah, looking we, for collaborations and and strategic partnerships and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, continued growth, and I think it's true. Um, I think it's fine in my opinion, to work on a few different businesses when they're an idea. But mm-hmm. the minute one has like legs, if you want it to mm-hmm. take off, you've got to, you got to lean in and focus. Um, so it seems like this is the big focus is where you're, where you're leaning in. Your goal is a doubling business and um, doing some really cool stuff. Uh, you, you've got, you've built up quite a, uh, quite a lot of act, you know, awards and stuff like that. People, you're definitely getting mm-hmm. recognized. What uh, advice to other young entrepreneurs that maybe a few steps behind you? What would you tell them to to focus? Like other than focus, pick one thing. How do they come up with the next idea? I think it's about tri- a trial and error, um, and and um, that's what I guess the the Facebook page came about. That's what this came about is you know coming up with an idea or a niche and testing the waters, putting a little bit of ad spend behind it, see what see what you can do. And that's I guess for me how I have found how something works and then you, you scale if something's if you're making you know the pearly whites i think i spent 120 dollars and made two three sales from that i was like okay that's 
spend 240, see what we get with 240, you know, and that's just how it starts. And all of a sudden, you know, you're steamrolling, all right, and you're chasing your tail. Like that's how it, for me it started. So I would just, a lot of trial and error, you know, if, if don't spend too much time on it, obviously do some research in terms of who else is doing it, um, trying to find it at something that others aren't. Like the custom tool for us really was um, a game changer. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, so, yeah, I think just trial, trial and error. And you know, bootstrapping, using the tools around us that are that are free. You know, the social medias, the Craigslist, the Gum Trees, the eBay's. Okay. Um, yeah, you touched on something really briefly. I think is super important because you said trial and error, and then you also said, uh, but don't spend too much time on it. And I think mm-hmm. for me, what I see with happens with a lot of entrepreneurs, people who are th- who say they want to get into entrepreneurship, is that they're so scared that their first project, their first idea, is not going to work that they never actually publish. So they're just talking about it. They're thinking about it. They tell people about it. They're building Mm -hmm. the website. They're working on it. It's waiting for it to be perfect. And they never actually even like test it and get it out there to the market. Um, So I love that you said, don't spend too much time, right? You've got to, time is like the commodity that doesn't refresh. You can go back and make more money. You can do those things, but you're not going to get that time back. Um, Mm -hmm. So I think speed of testing is super important. What, um, to me, Jake, like business is about life, right? Business isn't just about business. Um, and it's about helping you have the lifestyle that you want. And so what is one item on your personal bucket list that you're going to accomplish in the next 12 months? <laughs> that's going to be a hard question because we're due to have our third baby. So that's a pretty uh, good one. That it's yeah. already in motion. <laughs> have so the baby, about, you know, raise the yeah. baby. <laughs> that's right. That's I great. Mean, that's coming soon. Yeah, it's in April, so that will be our third. And obviously, we've grown this business through through having kids. So, I mean, that's a pat on our back. Um, I'll, I'll give us that. That's not not easy, but no, I think uh, you know, family time is very important. And and because the business is where it's at now, we can switch off at night time. We can switch off on the weekends and really enjoy the family time. So, for us, it's um, holidays and and making sure that we, you know, do give the the important you know family. The, the time that it deserves and needs, um, you know, that is that is more important than the business at the end of the day. So making Absolutely. sure that, that, that balance. No, solid. All right. Thank you so much for coming out on the show, Jake. And to all my business ninjas, wherever you're watching, listening, streaming, whatever it may be, it's your turn to go out and do something.